Democrats are haunted by the possibility of a Glenn Youngkin victory in the Virginia gubernatorial race. The former businessman and political novice is running neck and neck, in fact, in a lot of polls ahead with former Governor Terry McAuliffe in the blue state. Democrats fear a Youngkin victory could signal a potential red wave in 2022, pointing to a viable path for GOP in multiple swing states. Florida congressional candidate Corey Mills joins now to discuss the possibilities, not just in Virginia, but across the country of what could be a political moment of reckoning here. Corey, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me, Buck. So let's just start with this. I mean, McAuliffe is a longtime DC, DNC political insider. I mean, this guy is a Clintonista. He's about as tied in as you can really get. And Youngkin, all six foot seven of them, given, uh, given McAuliffe quite a run for his money so far. Uh, recent polling shows Youngkin receives 53% to McAuliffe's 45%, a new Fox News survey of Virginia likely voters. Youngkin's eight point advantage is outside the polls' margin of sampling error. A huge shift from just a couple of weeks ago when McAuliffe was ahead by five, 51 to 46. What's going on here, man? Why are we seeing this happen in Virginia? Well, I'll tell you, I think that it's a multitude of, of reasoning. I think the first thing is, is that we're starting to see a dramatic shift in voters recognizing the failures of the Democrat socialist movement. They're starting to lose the independent votes. They're starting to lose the blue dog Democrat moderates. And they're starting to see where there's infighting within their party, as we see with the current infrastructure bill, where it's literally blue dog Democrats versus socialism. And I think that that's really working in our advantage. But I think also people are just sick and tired of the standard politicians who continue to go forward, the Bushes, the Clintons, the you know Obama 2.0 that we're seeing right now. And I think they're looking for a change. And I think that this really signals, as you talked about, a a huge red wave across the country. I think that you know, once Virginia goes red, you're gonna see other states like Florida continue to turn even more red. You're gonna start seeing Texas take off. And I think that it's just a, a an acknowledgement that people are seeing the failed democratic socialist strategies. And, I, and I'm, I, I wanna preface it with this. This is not a Republican win. This is not because the Republicans have come up with some grand strategy or that we have understood the populist and conservative movement better than others. What we're doing is we're actually seeing the benefits of failed Democrat strategy. So I still think that there's a lot of work to do on the Republican Party to unite us and to continue to put forward the America First agenda. Corey, the uh, race in Virginia has been very closely tied in a lot of people's minds to the fight back against critical race theory teaching in schools and parents who are showing up the school board meetings, as we know, this gotten attention all the way up to the top of the Biden administration. You had the Attorney General Merrick Garland put out a letter that seemed a little bit like a, a threat to parents who show up at school board meetings as if they need to hear from the Attorney General that federal law enforcement is looking at them as possible domestic terrorists. I'm glad there was some at least verbal accountability for that up on Capitol Hill earlier this week. But what do you think is the central issue here for Virginia voters, I mean, is it just this fight back against CRT or, or is it more broadly the Democrat policies that are failing, not just in Virginia, but really across the nation as we see in the first year of the Biden administration? Well, I think it's a failure across the board. I think that we're looking at the open border policies in the Southern border where we have 1.7 million illegals in the country. I think that we're looking at the loss of medical choice where you're having forced vaccinations. I think you're looking at you know, the 1619 Project and Critical Race Theory, which is to indoctrinate our children. Uh, we're seeing the forced vaccinations are our military, which is not building a cohesive unit, which weakens us militarily. You know, we're facing national security, humanitarian health crisis across the country as a result of failed administration. We also saw what happened in the failed withdrawal in Afghanistan. You know, myself, as well as for three others, went over and conducted the very first successful overland rescue of Americans since the fall of, of, of Afghanistan with, with regards to Maryam and her three children. So you're looking at failure on the global stage. You're looking at failure in domestic and foreign policy. And I think that Americans have had enough. 